when it comes to negotiations. And then, of course, we've got Odell Beckham Jr., who looks, I don't know, I guess unfazed about all the trade talks. This was on Jaguars wide receiver Shane Wynn's Instagram. Oh, Beckham, he's such a good dancer. Uh, you know, he's dancing to Flip De Niro's Leave Me Alone. Funny song choice, I thought. Perhaps more than just a coincidence, though, the song called Leave Me Alone. Darren, I know you know it well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, Todd Gurley was asked about Odell Beckham Jr. recently, about coming to the, to the Rams. And the L.A. Times reported that Gurley said this. He said, if we had a man, it would be awesome. I'd be happy. Golf would be happy. McVay would be happy. The owner would be happy. The whole team would be happy. Everyone's yeah, happy. I'd be happy. I mean, who wouldn't be happy at Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, as an offensive weapon? So with that, we're going to play a little game here. A game we call The Percentage. So, the Percentage. Yeah, I just huh? named it that. Not very, not very creative. So I'm going to ask each of you guys, what do you think the percentage chances are of Odell Beckham Jr. playing for the New York Giants week one of this year? So I want to start with you first, Hawk. Yeah, I'm going to go. So here we go. I, need, I need a little technical help here. Yeah, here we go. Up, there, up top. Jeff, can Boom. you help the man Boom. out? There we go. That's how you think I know what I'm doing? That's, that's Jeff being yeah. competitive. 100%. He exactly. figured out that pretty quick. quick. Oh, yeah, all right. so, so you think there's th this whole trade talk and, and, and the flirting, so to speak, from other teams is... I think it's all a song and dance. I do. I, I think the Giants potentially trading him and then setting a price so high that no one can come close to it is them just trying to scare him and maybe lower the price a little bit in the negotiations. But Odell is such a special talent. Like, for me, as a mm. wide receiver, he's number one for me. It's him 1A, Julio 1B, oh, wow. and Antonio 1C. Give me any of them, but those aren't guys you ever let out of your building. Okay. I'm going to say... Uh, there we go. I'm going to say 70%. And I changed because at one point I was at 100%. But then when you start like thinking about it... Ago. Yeah, I changed. <laughs> I can't change my, my way of thinking. So, look, I, I look at it this way. 70% chance that he's there, but the 30% chance is a team like the San Francisco 49ers. Ooh, that's a high who, percentage, man. Who have the options and who have the resources to make something mm -hmm. happen. When we look at the San Francisco 49ers, you're talking about John Lynch, Mike Sh uh, Kyle Shanahan, who coached Julio Jones and is looking for a number one presence, yeah. and you got Jimmy G. If you want to make a big splash right now, I would say the San Francisco 49ers are a team with the resources to do so, but outside of that, I'd say the New York Giants. I'll say 60% here, and I think I agree with some of your sentiment, there, but I don't think there's a team out there that's going to give up two first-round picks for him. Mm -hmm. I think the outlier here is Dave Gettleman. Gettleman has proven in the past, the general manager for yeah. the Giants, that he plays hardball. Don't forget, he rescinded the tag on Josh Norman when he was with the Carolina Panthers, ultimately making him a free agent when he could have just had him under the franchise tag the following year. Did Gettleman learn from that? Because the next year they struggled in the defensive backfield. The question yeah. is, if Gettleman didn't necessarily learn from that, I think he'd be willing to say, we're moving on from Odell. We're going to not delay the inevitable. And that's my question about Gettleman is this, the GM for the New York Giants is this. He was in, in Carolina. He right. made that, that, that situation, had that situation with Josh Norman, let him go. Is he the hired bad guy? Because now he's already let JPP go. Mm -hmm. He's gone. He yeah. knows he has to make a big oh, decision, yeah. decision on Eli Manning, which is coming up. And now it's Odell Beckham. And is to he your, the guy? A, hey, and to is your he point. the guy? And, and, Andrew had a good point, though, too, when we were talking earlier about this, that that's a big strike in New York. That's you, a New York. He's open to the same New York media as the players. Yeah. Is he ready to deal Odell Beckham? And have that tagline on his name forever that that's he got rid of one of the best. I think that's why. I think talent. that's why ownership brought him in because he's a guy that can probably handle. It, it might have gotten right. fired in Charlotte though. That's right. It may have. Well, so. ownership in just July of, of last year was saying we're keeping him, we're paying him, he's yeah. worth it. So yeah. obviously the tune has changed there, and maybe it's not going to be two, two first round picks. So that price is going to have to come down. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So that's Odell's situation. Now we got to talk Le'Veon Bell, guys. So what are the percentage chances of Le'Veon Bell? playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers come week one of this season? This is a little different for me, only because Le'Veon Bell has already proven he's the kind of guy who has the goal not to show up. So I'm going to go 50-50 <laughs> here yeah. with Le'Veon for week one. I don't think a holdout would last yeah. much longer than that, but I think he is adamant on getting this deal done. He understands the time he is in his career as a 26-year-old running back. This is his only chance. He has to strike now because on the other side of 28-29, he just doesn't have the same earning potential. I'm actually, you want to go first? No, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to agree. I'm going to say 50% too. And I'm saying that because 
First of all, let's let's get this fact out there. If he he could hold out for 10 weeks, mm -hmm. come back in week 11, and still get an accrued season to be able to hit free agency next year, the only reason he would do that though would be to preserve his health because it is a tough position. You could wind yeah. up getting hurt there. But you're giving up a lot of money, almost a million dollars a week if you do that. Are you going to make that up with your new contract? Ultimately, I personally think this is not going to come down to emotion, but math and injury yeah. risk. And that's why I say 50-50 chance. If he's there for week one, I think that uh, it's because he, if he's not there for week one, I don't think he's there till week 11, yeah. personally. Yeah. I'm going to say 75%. And I'm saying it simply because of one thing. You like that? I, like that. I messed that one up. <laughs> anyway, I'm, like, $26 million in the next in the two years. That's what we're talking about. If we talk about Le'Veon Bell, he's going to be franchised last year, 12, 14 this year, $26 million. A day. There's not a running back in football right now or how many players in football are making $26 million in two years. Right. I think Le'Veon Bell is looking at this as my window was, is, of opportunity is closing. Yes, he's going to miss all the training camp. He will be there during the season, and then we'll work out a deal for next year. I think he comes back this season as a Smith first season. Wouldn't it have served the Steelers better to, instead of paying him $26 million over the last two years, just get the deal done yeah. yeah. with $35 yeah. million guaranteed, and we wouldn't have this we problem? Hey, you know, you know we could talk about there, and we'll maybe get this a little bit later, but that's Kirk Cousins. That's what happened yeah. with Cousins. Yeah. Exactly. They didn't get the deal done soon enough. Yeah. Well, maybe Le'Veon will go back to putting Steelers in his Twitter handle, because he changed it. Remember, he took it out. Everyone freaked yeah. out. Mm -hmm. All right, a little too much social media for me. Love it. Um, all right, so we, we talked about this season coming up, but really the following season is in question too because there could be tons of changes, obviously trades and contract situations. So let's go back to our original game here, the percentage chances here, that Odell Beckham Jr. plays for the Giants week one of 2019. I'll go again. All right. And this might be a shocker. 100% wow. he is going to be a Giant. Wow. In 2019, All right, why? Season. How? He's How does just this work? too good. Like, he was one of maybe four players with, you know, the Tom Brady's, the Aaron Rodgers, the Gronks, the Julio's, that I would get out of my seat on the opposing team to watch him up close in person because his talent is that rare that I had to see it up front and right in front of my face, man. He is so special. You can't let those guys leave the building, and I think the Giants know that. Hawk, are you buying that he's a distraction in New York for this locker room, that, that his behavior, his emotions are just too much for this new regime i'm not buying that i mean i know there's antics i know there's emotion i know he gets passionate when they're losing or passionate when he's not getting the ball and be able to make a difference but really for the most part of it i think it's water under the bridge at this point because everything he does on the field it doesn't affect he's not in the drug program he's not getting arrested That's right i mean he's yeah. making bad headlines but again what are we talking about he is the best wide receiver in the league and he should be paid that way oh i agree listen i'm gonna go 50-50. That's how I'm going to cut it. I, I think That would just uh, be 50%. There you go. Oh, I, thought you're, I thought you were going 50%. <laughs> well, please. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I, I look at Odell and I say, look, the question mark, the wild card is, is Gettleman. Mm -hmm. How does their relationship work out between Odell Beckham and Gettleman? And, and, again, we go right back to, are there other teams that are willing to put, come mm -hmm. up and find a way to get them? These two teams, this, Odell Beckham needs New York City. New York City needs Odell Beckham. And the only other market that I could see Odell going to would be Los Angeles because he needs a big market. I think those are the two teams or situations that are there. So I think it's a 50-50 chance if Gettleman and Odell can come and, and get their differences done, this deal gets done. So I'll say 75%. I think I've been all over the map today in, in yes, thinking have. in my head. <laughs> yes, I think have. actually I was below you before and now I'm above you. Yeah. I completely agree with the market aspect of it, that there are very few markets that will make Odell Beckham considerably happy but it all comes back to the trade compensation if they don't get the trade done now i think that a deal ultimately does get done with him he will be back and really the reason i say that is because a team is not going to give up two first round picks for a player that ultimately they're then going to have to give a monster contract to yeah. the best part about drafting players right now is that you get them for five years for very cheap if you give up two of your first round picks and then have to pay the guy a ton that's just counterproductive i don't see a team ultimately being able to pull that off if Gettleman is just fed up with him, and that's why I'm leaving that 25% yeah. margin there, he ships him out. But really, I do think 
cooler heads will prevail. You, you've, you've done a lot to yeah. convince me of this. this Can I ask you this, Hawk, though? Yes. We, Odell knows what the reports are right now, yes. that, they're, that, he, that they're not technically shopping him, but they, the doors are open for a trade. Odell opened that door, though. That's not the Giants. Is, is there going to be an issue in terms of their relationship now, like we've seen in Washington with Kirk Cousins, let's say? Do you think this is going to be a problem for them? I think there would be no issue with Kirk Cousins in Washington if they would have given him $100 million. Anybody who gives me $100 million, <laughs> everything else, we can move on. Water on the bridge. So, <laughs> as soon as they give this man a contract, hey, we're right. going to have a happy Odell. A happy <laughs> Odell is a great Odell. Exactly. I totally agree. I is totally true, agree. Though? Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He gets paid. He's fine. I, I think, listen, I don't think when you talk about the players in that locker room, yeah. we're not getting the same feedback. We're getting about a feedback of he's a great teammate. He works hard. Right. He, he shows mm -hmm. up. He does everything on, uh, on point. I think when we look outside in, we see all the antics and the social media stuff, and then we make this assumptions about them. Inside that locker room, the players love them. Works hard. Yeah, he does. That's true. When I wake up in the morning and I see myself in the mirror, that's the only person that can stop me from doing anything that I want to do. Me being here is changing the world already. Shaquem Griffin is the fan favorite underdog in the draft, but that doesn't mean he's a sure thing. We'll talk where he could land coming up next.